We keep talking about the weather, how it's unseasonable, unseasonably, unseasonably nice wonderful. for December. We hope that sticks around tomorrow because we've got a parade to get to, right? Yeah. Well, Christmas parade in Springfield. It gets a little bit colder by tomorrow, but not bad. It's worth it to get the candy. Oh, absolutely. That's what you're saying, yeah. Right? Last year it was way colder. <laughs> when I updated the graphic from last year for yeah. the parade, yeah. it was in the 20s, feeling like the teens. This year it'll be in the 40s. Okay. Oh. Very so nice. that's like. So no, kids, not bad. Yeah. Kids that are out there, don't worry. Get the candy. Come say hi to us as well. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll be fun. We're, we'll keep things quiet today and tomorrow. We're starting out with some dry roads in Branson. We get those temperatures in the 30s. It's 39 degrees right now with just some cloud cover and the dry conditions. We've got mostly cloudy skies out there this morning, but things are dry and smooth as you had to work in school. Temperatures are about where they were yesterday. Not too much colder or too much warmer. It's 34 degrees in Springfield, 39 in Branson, and 38 degrees in Ava. Winds are out of the south. That keeps those temperatures mild. And we're looking at another not so bad day today. So we'll have a mix of sun and clouds. Things stay dry on the roads as we head through the afternoon. We're looking at these temperatures back in the lower 50s today. 54 degrees by dismissal with a few clouds and a, a quiet December day ahead. Wind, wind shift to the north and west tonight, so things get colder tomorrow. Then we're looking at that wintry mix, still possible Sunday and Monday. But I have some updates to the forecast that I want to give you and to explain still what are some of the things that we're watching. And then we've got uh, quiet weather once that storm exits next week. Your full forecast is up in 10 minutes. Thank you, Elisa. New for you this morning, package theft is, of course, a nationwide problem, and it happens every year, especially over the holidays. That's why Arnijah McDonald met with local law enforcement and joins us now this morning to share ways you can outsmart porch pirates. Nijah? That's right. Good morning, Lauren and Joe. Did you know roughly 36% of people report having a package stolen at least once? Well, Justin Warnall with the Republic Police Department says prevention is key, especially as package deliveries become more and more common. Warnall says surveillance cameras like Ring can be helpful. However, a thief might still be able to get away with your packages. Warnall shares other ways to keep your items safe. One of the things that I usually like to do is if I know I'm not going to be available for package, I try to either send it to an address of a family member that I know will be home, or I let a neighbor know to keep an eye on my residents. Sometimes on websites you can choose whether you can ask for a signature. Okay, Nigel, he, he mentioned there asking your neighbors to help you out. You found an app that will help you with that. Yes, it's called eNeighbor. And so here it is on the screen. And it's available on most smartphones. And how the app works is it connects you with local stores and neighbors in your area who are able to receive your deliveries. We're talking about this now. This is maybe you live in an area that you don't know a lot of people. And we initially thought we're trying to wrap our heads around this, but realize this is kind of almost like Uber, right? People are verified that sign up for that, right? To help you out. Yeah, they're verified. So you're putting your trust in them just like you would if you're getting into an Uber. But there is insurance. Yes, there's insurance. So they will insure each package up to three hundred dollars. All right, another way just to keep the packages safe, especially for this time of year. Thank you, Nigel. And if it's not packages, cards are often sent through the mail around now with gifts inside of there, whether that's cash, checks, or even gift cards. One bank in the Ozarks, though, says to be careful of how you send those gifts through. Arvest Bank is warning its customers that one of the worst things you could do is send cash in the mail, and giving it electronically is more efficient. You can do that using an app or even email. Darlin Mabins is a branch manager at Arvest and explains if you're skeptical about sending money the electronic way, just talk with your bank. And if you still insist on sending through the mail, there are ways to make sure it's delivered to the right hands. Sending it in a way that you have to get a signature to know that it's made it. So it's a little bit safer versus sticking it in an envelope, putting a postage stamp in it, and sending it in the mail that way. If you're going to send something, I would send a check or a cashier's check. At least you have a means of stopping it, getting it reissued through your bank, versus cash is gone. Once it's gone, it's gone. There's no way to recover that. Also, it is getting close to the deadline for basic shipping to get delivered before Christmas, but we've got those deadlines posted from the top mail carriers that you know. It's listed over on OzarksFirst.com. Advocacy groups for sexual assault victims are excited for Cox Health's $600,000 grant to help them out. Typically, a victim will come into the hospital to get forensic tests done for sexual assault or domestic abuse. Nurses with proper training perform those tests, but there aren't always a ton of nurses qualified, especially in rural areas. The grant money will provide that training for nurses at three rural Cox Health hospitals. It also provides for telehealth systems. 
once you start to get into more rural communities, it is harder for victims to access those services. And so it's super exciting uh, for the victim and for our community to utilize technology in an innovative way to not just leverage resources and make the most use of them and be good stewards of our dollars, but also serve more people. Cox Health expects this to go into effect early next year. In your right to know, a Springfield man charged with murder has pleaded guilty in court. Brandon Johnson was charged with second degree murder and armed criminal action in November of 2017. Police say Johnson killed his half brother, Danny Dayton. He'll be sentenced on January 6th. The Missouri State University Board of Governors has approved the first step of the Ideas Common project. MSU President Cliff Smart tweeted out yesterday the board accepted a letter of intent with the Vicino Group. Now, our past reporting shows the plan is to expand the Jordan Valley Innovation Center and connect it to a multi purpose complex with office space across the street as well as more parking. The hope is to attract new companies to downtown Springfield. We're still waiting on a few details, including the cost. Two lawsuits to tell you about this morning. You may recall that $2.4 billion dispute over the Kansas Expressway extension on the south side of town. It's now been thrown out of court. The news leader reports a judge dismissed the lawsuit filed by Dr. Gil Mobley in September. The court said the suit lacked standing. Mobley named 25 people for what he called ecological harm because of the project. The extension has been in the works for decades and it will build onto Kansas Expressway at Republic Road all the way to Nixon. To help reduce traffic. However, more land has to be purchased before construction starts. Dr. Mobley lives in a neighborhood near where the extension would be built, and he says he's actually relieved the judge dismissed the lawsuit because it took such a heavy toll on him. He tried to submit a documentary claiming the project would disrupt nearby caves in the area as well, but that was determined insufficient for the court. The second lawsuit to fill you in on, the former principal of Hillcrest High School is suing Springfield Public Schools. 61-year-old Gary Moore claims he was targeted for removal because of his age. The news leader also reports Moore was given positive reviews until 2018. The lawsuit claims in the next school year, Moore's supervisors alleged he lacked enthusiasm, commitment, and trust in Superintendent John Jungman. Moore says younger principals weren't subjected to comments about enthusiasm. Another issue in the suit, Moore says he was told to improve graduation and attendance rates if he wanted to keep his job. Months later, his contract was not renewed. Moore wants $25,000 in damages for lost wages and career opportunities. SPS is responding. Top officials strongly deny all of the claims and believe the district acted appropriately. We're starting out with some dry roads on our Color 10 Live Drive. An easy December morning with just a couple of clouds and temperatures not terribly cold. It's 34 degrees in Springfield right now. Uh, we've got the temperatures starting out mild. A nice day today and then updates on our winter storm coming up next. From Color 10 Ozarks First, Lauren Barnes, Joe Morano, and weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. This is Color 10 News Daybreak.
And now weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. Good morning and happy Friday. We're starting out pretty quiet in Springfield this morning. Just a couple of clouds. Temperatures still running about 10 degrees above average at 34 degrees, thanks to some southerly winds at 9 miles per hour. It's 39 in Branson, 37 in Camdenton, and 35 degrees in Lake of the Ozark. So, pretty quiet start this morning. Just a couple of clouds and temperatures not terribly cold. And we stay pretty quiet through today, through tonight, through tomorrow. Our big storm that we're watching for Sunday and Monday is still out in this. Turning in the Pacific Ocean. And what we're looking at is this storm making landfall by Saturday. And that's when we'll get a better look at it because our weather balloons can actually sample what the storm looks like. And that's when the forecast will come together much more clearly. Uh, so until then, we've got some quiet conditions out there today upper 40s, lower 50s, and a mix of sun and clouds. A cold front actually comes through tonight. We could have some light rain, temperatures in the middle 30s. Most of us wind up staying dry. North and west winds will take hold behind that front tomorrow. So temperatures will be colder in the upper 30s and lower 40s with a mix of sun and clouds. It will just feel chillier than it's been and much more like December. We increase clouds going into Sunday, but nothing happens yet. We'll start to see that onset of rain as we head through mid morning and early afternoon on Sunday. So here's here's that what that storm system will play out as. We're looking at some of that rain starting maybe in the afternoon on Sunday. Then rain to mix through most of the afternoon. Because this thing is tracking to our south, but it looks like it's tracking farther north. So that brings warmer air up into the Ozarks, squeezing that cold air up to the top. It looks like the snow, most of the snow, stays maybe north of our area. We'll continue with a mostly cold rain and a wintry mix, especially around Springfield and areas up top to the north. We could get in on some snow up in central Missouri, especially on the overnights as things get colder. And then we'll continue with that uh, rain to mix Monday afternoon. The whole thing exits. Maybe some snow wraps around on the backside as things get a little bit colder. And then high pressure brings us sunshine on Tuesday and things trending colder. So, as far as the types of precipitation, I've pushed all of this up more because the storm looks like it's trending farther north, which gives us more in the way of warmer. Precipitation types where we're looking at mostly a cold rain, maybe rain or a wintry mix. And if we get snow, it would be just those top counties up in central Missouri with maybe some snow. So if we get up to two inches of snow, that's where it would be, maybe from Clinton over towards Lake of the Ozarks, maybe about an inch from Lebanon to Stockton. But I would say that would be at the most, probably not looking at much or any snow in the Springfield area, and especially not to the south. We probably have a greater risk of getting a glaze of ice because we'll be dealing with a cold rain and temperatures flirting with freezing. So, especially the bridges and overpasses might be an issue Sunday night and Monday uh, in, from southern Missouri into Springfield. Uh, maybe not so much up top to the north because we'll have maybe temperatures a little bit colder. So, a light rain to mix develops on Sunday, and that's where uh, we'll have the, the warmer precipitation types. Things get cold overnight, so we could get that snow line to dip farther south. We get some snow in there. It looks like Monday's trending warmer. We spend more time as a cold rain or mix, and then it ends at snow. We're still dealing with very small differences in temperature and track, lead to very big differences in pre precipitation type and totals. Some slick roads possible, especially in the bridges and overpasses Sunday night and Monday morning. So stay tuned to the latest forecast. 53 degrees today, few clouds still on the mild side of things for December. 35 degrees with some light rain possible tonight. 43 degrees tomorrow, mostly cloudy and turning colder. We start with that rain to mix on Sunday, could get some snowflakes in there at night, and then rain to mix again on Monday. Again, these temperatures are just going to be so borderline through this whole event and then changing day and night. So you really just want to keep your eyes peeled. Really need that Color 10 weather app. Now, oh, absolutely, huh? yeah. Just to keep up to date with everything that's coming because certain areas are going to be impacted in different ways. Exactly, so. yeah. All right, only time for one birthday this morning, so we got to make it count, gang. Uh -oh. All right. <laughs> up on the board is Steve Buscemi. All right, funny guy, goofy guy, but also does some serious stuff. Boardwalk Empire in Fargo, <sighs> you know? Yeah. But. Tough to guess. He pops into Adam Sandler movies too, I've noticed. Not really. Yeah. I'm Joe lead us off. I'm not sure. 58? I was going to say maybe 60. Six. Oh. <laughs> 63. Okay. <laughs> 59. 65. All right, what you got for us here? All wrong. 60. 62. Oh, I'm the closest. All in the ballpark. <laughs> All in the ballpark, at least. Yes. Right? Happy birthday to Steve Buscemi. And also, our viewers at home, we have quite a few to announce today. Colby Wise, happy birthday. Heather Knopfnagel. Christina Randall is our Ooh. producer. Happy
Happy birthday. Yeah. birthday. He's celebrating tomorrow with a Saturday birthday. Love that. So is Sean Runcorn, Gerald Bowman, and we have a few more celebrating this weekend too, I believe. Kendall Plank, Marty Clinton, and Arlene Solazzo. Hope you all have a great day. Now, sports on Color 10 News. Well, the big local news Thursday was undoubtedly the unveiling of the Greenwood Boys Basketball Blue and Gold Tournament brackets. It's always one of the more fun times of the year when holiday basketball action hits. We will start breaking it down with the Blue Division. Top seed Willard getting it. Tigers will face Ava. The winner of that faces whoever comes out of the clever Hillcrest game. And Lebanon gets the five seed, draws Branson. Winner of that gets either the four seed Hartfield or Marshfield. On the other side of the blue division, we got Crane at seven playing Houston. Nick's at the two against Willow Springs. Three seed goes to Bolivar facing Catholic. Winner getting either Rogersville or Ash Grove. That's it for the blue side. As for the gold division, it's Kickapoo claiming that top spot, drawing Aurora. Winner of that gets either Skyline or Reed Springs. Then you got Fair Grove at five and Republic at four match up with Buffalo and Mountain Grove, respectively. And in the final seating, Strafford at the seven seeing Spokane, Ozark at the two facing West Plains. Then Mount Vernon gets the six against Stockton. And finally, the host Greenwood are the three against Camdenton. It means we have a chance in an Aminu Muhammad and Anton Brookshire meeting if Greenwood advances far enough. All that action begins Thursday, December 26th at Hammonds and JQH starting at 9.30 a.m. And speaking of basketball, less than a week ago, Evangel women's basketball was riding six straight wins and was receiving votes in the NAIA poll. But after an overtime loss to William Penn, Thursday's College of the Ozarks game marked instead a chance to bounce back. But the visiting Bobcats had already topped the Crusaders once this year and entered at 8 and 2 overall. And they were up for most of this one. Sadie Chisholm here sinking a Crusader 3. Evangel down just 45 42. But the visiting Bobcats respond in kind. Abby Oliver. From the corner, dropping down a triple. The lead is 48 44. And College of the Ozarks controls it from there. Julie Stone going behind the back and off the glass. Takes it to a double digit lead as College of the Ozarks tops Evangel once again, 83 to 76. So, would the Evangel men have a more appealing final, or would they too 
be left on the shelf. Close battle early. Brant Cochran, a little sidestep and sink action for a Bobcat three. Game tied at five, but the Crusaders go on a roll here. Kick out to Edgerail. Martin Burrow ended with a triple in Evangel's favor. And not much later than that, some give and go action ends up in the hands of Clark Brewington, who drops one through from distance. Evangel with eight straight points as the Crusaders go on to win comfortably 81 to 59. I'm Matt Vereen with your Friday morning sports. So here's the deal. We're talking about indoor sports. How people are excited for that now. Football's done and everything locally. The commute to there could be a little bit tough depending on the weather, you know? Yeah, but if there are any games on Sunday, you'll absolutely want to just check before yeah. you head out. Um, we're starting out pretty quiet this morning. It's 39 degrees with some dry roads, a couple of clouds in Branson. Things looking good. Temperatures are about where they were yesterday. Not all that different. It's 34 degrees in Springfield, 38 in Rawa, 32 in West Plains, and 35 degrees in Mount Home. We've got some mild conditions still by dismissal today, 53 degrees with a couple of clouds. We're quiet through the afternoon, especially for December, just like we were yesterday. A couple of uh, light showers possible tonight. A cold front comes through. We'll have those temperatures in the middle 30s. And then we're looking at these temperatures tomorrow. Colder on north and west winds. We're in the upper 30s and lower 40s. We increase clouds tomorrow night, but nothing happens yet. We start with that light rain to mix on Sunday. So for the Christmas parade on Saturday, we're looking at a mix of sun and clouds. Temperatures in the 40s, 43 degrees on north and west winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. It's not bad for the parade. A little more, a little colder than it's been, but uh, truly, again, not bad. Uh, rain to mix then starts on Sunday. Temperatures in the 30s. It looks like this system is trending farther north and warmer for now. So I've nudged up these rain, these precipitation types, where most of us are probably looking at a cold rain to a mix. Snow might really focus itself. Just the tippy top part of our area, uh, maybe Clinton and Lake of the Ozarks see some snow. If we get any accumulation, maybe one to two inches, it would be up in that area from Clinton and Lake of the Ozarks, and maybe about an inch uh, from Stockton to Lebanon. But I'm more confident that we will uh, maybe not see so much snow, maybe see more of a mix. So we could get a glaze of ice by late Sunday into Monday, especially in southwest Missouri. As you go farther south, it's more rain. As you go farther north, maybe a few more snowflakes. Up next, we take you back to the 14 hour long debate on the two articles of impeachment. This uh, hearing's been enough of an institutional embarrassment without putting it on an endless loop. We'll have the information on this debate and why it ended so quickly late into the night. Stay with us.
Welcome back, everyone. After weeks of impeachment hearings, the House Judiciary Committee held a 14 hour long debate on the two articles of impeachment yesterday. Republicans and Democrats went at it, and the day ended abruptly without a final vote. This morning, they hold those votes, and Laura Podesta explains to us how this all expects to play out. This may be our judge. The committee is in recess. Chairman. House Judiciary Mr. Chairman Jerry Nadler left Republicans stunned late last night. This crap like this is why people are having a, such a terrible opinion of Congress. 14 hours after the hearing started, Nadler pushed the votes on the two articles of impeachment to this morning. I want the members on both sides of the aisle to think about what has happened over these last two days. President Trump is accused of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. No. Ms. Scanlon votes no. Ms. Garcia? No. Throughout the day, the Democratic majority struck down Republican amendments meant to kill the impeachment effort. In between, fireworks that had little to do with the issue at hand. Lying about sex, we could put Stormy Daniels' case ahead of us. The Hertz rental officer told me he found a crack pipe in the car and on one of the consoles a line of white powder residue. The pot calling the kettle black. 12 hours in, a plea to refocus. This uh, hearing's been enough of an institutional embarrassment without putting it on an endless loop. Meanwhile, Senate Republicans and the White House are coordinating their strategy for the expected trial next month. There will be no difference between the president's position and our position. The jury, Senate Republicans, are going to coordinate with the defendant, Donald Trump, on how exactly the kangaroo court is going to be run. The full House is expected to cast the final impeachment votes next week. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Today's votes are expected to pass straight down party lines. Democrats say they delayed it last night simply because it was too late to vote, while Republicans argue that they moved it for TV ratings. Still ahead for you, the top three stories you need to know if you're just joining us this morning. Plus, Elisa takes us through the calm before the cold precipitation expected on the back end of this weekend. Good morning. My name is Alexis. I go to Watkins Elementary School. Today is since December 13th, and the lunch menu is pepperoni pizza, cheese pizza, pizza, chicken patty sandwich, broccoli, and wild blueberries. Bye.
And now weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. If you're just waking up with us, it's going to be mild today, turning colder tomorrow, setting the stage for that wintry mix we're expecting later on this weekend. I've got some updates to that in a couple of minutes. First, we've got some cloud cover out in Springfield. It's 34 degrees on southerly winds, so still not terribly cold for December, actually about 10 degrees above average. We're mostly cloudy to overcast this morning and maybe some sprinkles to the south, but a lot of it might not even be reaching the ground because our air is so dry. It's 34 degrees in Springfield, 38 in Monette, and 39 degrees in Branson. A not so bad start this morning with the cloud cover. By dismissal, 54 degrees with a mix of sun and clouds. I think it's still mild. I've got many updates uh, to that storm system that we've been tracking for Sunday and Monday. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Joe? Three things you need to know this morning. First, locally, Cox Health has received a $600,000 grant for advocacy groups for sexual assault victims. Typically, a victim will come into the hospital to get forensic tests done for sexual assault or domestic abuse, but there aren't many nurses that are qualified to give that testing in rural areas. The grant money will provide that training for nurses at three rural Cox Health hospitals, and Cox Health expects this to go into effect in early of next year. Regionally for you, a two-month manhunt in Kansas City has ended. Investigators say they've arrested Hugo Villanueva Morales. He's wanted for shooting a total of nine people inside Tequila KC Bar in October. Four people died of injuries from that shooting. And nationally, the man wanted in the death of a Texas police sergeant is now in custody. Tavares Henderson is accused of fatally hitting Sergeant Kayla Sullivan as he was trying to avoid arrest. Prosecutors say charges will be upgraded to capital murder. Investigators say he was cooperative, and during an interview, he confessed to the murder. Henderson's bond has been set at $150,000. All right, Joe, thank you for today's top three. We're also following a story out of Georgia where crews say they finished removing 320,000 gallons of oil and water. Water from a capsized cargo ship off the coast of Georgia. The Golden Ray has been resting on its side in the shallow water of St. Simon's Sound since early September. The 24 people on board, you might remember, were 23 crew members and a pilot, were rescued in the days after the ship capsized. On